Hello, welcome back to the forge. Had a lot of trouble getting this video off the ground. I don't understand why, but it always seems that when I come to guards and pommels, for some reason I have a whole lot of problems. Anyway, so I'm working on a guard and pommel today. Um, also, the the blade is uh, rough sanded, actually up to about 600 grit. And you say rough sanded, that's that's getting getting up there a little bit. But it's uh, there. I noticed a while ago when I was looking at it that there's still Still some scratch marks from uh, previous grits, so I'm gonna have to go back and get all of that out. Uh, may or may not show that on video. This is the primary part of this video. It's gonna be guards and pommels and handle. So anyway, let's get started. Um, oh, that's a little hot. I just uh, tempered this, uh, re-tempered this punch, and then I grabbed a hold of it. It's a little bit warm. want to get a good initial mark in here that one's a little bit off not looking to go very deep at the moment this is going to be a little bit wide for uh, a little bit thick rather for what I'm looking for but I have another little uh, drift to to compensate for that wasn't hot. I grabbed it and didn't realize I probably shouldn't have done that and thankfully it really wasn't hot. If it had been, I might be going in the house right now. Not yet. And then I got it stuck. Thank you. Half on, half off flow here. Step this down. Yeah, kind of like that. So I'm going to stop here and do the same on the other side. I'm afraid this is going to fly out of my tongs. That would be a first on the forge, wouldn't it? That wouldn't even be a first for this video. About there. So I'm going to lay this one aside for now. We'll get started on the pommel. I already drilled a hole in it. We're just going to go ahead and drift it out and uh, create a ring pommel. Alright. 
this is a punch that kind of got a little bent out of shape. So, but it, it fits in the hole, it drifts. We're just gonna roll with it. I'll repair it when I need it for a punch again. That's starting to turn hexagonal because, well, this punch is hexagonal. Let go. There's always that. All right. One more time. We're getting there so I've got the steel here that I'm going to be using uh, of course you've seen both of these already I'm going to try to flatten the back of this things evened up there we're gonna grind in a little further here straighten things out and start creating some arms here uh, I suppose I could have forged those out more but we're just gonna grind them this needs to be ground a little rounder what I've got here is a piece of purple heart um, I think I ultimately decided to use this for the handle. I think it'll look good with the red dragon pen. Uh, but let's see what we can do with this uh, with the guard right now, and then we'll move to the pommel. I have a pair of earplugs somewhere around my neck. Yeah, of course. I'm afraid if I let go of this, it'll go that way. Sorry, I'm gonna replace this thing. Anyway, got the guard uh, shoved down there. It's not, it's nowhere near fit up. Got the pommel on, um, everything is ugly. It needs to be sanded down and uh, made to look nice. I'm gonna work on the guard, on the pommel and the guard and the tang that will be showing um, before, I, uh, before I go any farther. Uh, the guard still needs, as I mentioned before, a lot of work. So anyway, I'm going to swap out belts on the grinder, and we're going to get on that. So meet me over there. I forgot to release the hook here and put tension on the blade.
All right, so I'm having some issues with my camera and the computer um, running out of space on the camera, and evidently I'm running out of space on the computer too. Uh, so I've, I, while I was trying to free up some space, I just went ahead and drilled this out. Uh, it's not perfect yet. Uh, I didn't intend to get it perfect yet. But what I'm going to do now is burn it in. All right, I think. <laughs> <coughs> okay, I'm not gonna have. To, I am no joking. I am gonna have to step away from it. <coughs> The mask does wonders, actually. Uh, <coughs> yeah, let me see if I can get my breath. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to let that stay in cool. I'm going to take this around and hit it with the brooch. Uh, clean out some of that nastiness that's in there. And any further fit-up that needs to be done, I believe I can do it with the brooch now. Uh, maybe drill bits if I need to, but I don't think I'm going to need drill bits. So, ready to move on. No. Footage might be included in this video, I don't know, but uh, earlier I was using this brooch and the handle pulled out and it was quite difficult to use, so I've epoxied it back in place. I hope that that'll work. And I'm sorry about the wind, it's, uh, it's been windy since Ian blew through. I'll uh, work on this a little bit, get some of this nastiness out of there, and then I'll go around and get the, uh, the dagger and let the tang cool right now, just where it is. But yeah, a lot of charred mess coming out right now. I don't care if it's loose. I would like to have some expansion and contraction room in there. Although Coca-Cola, from what I understand, is quite a stable wood to begin with. Um, still, I'd like to leave room for any error. Just kind of turn it sideways and get along those sides. Hey, did you see that catch? No, it's off camera. It's biting. Worked good. All right, well, I'm going to see how it fits, and uh, we'll get back with you. Okay, moment of truth. Uh, it actually goes all the way on there. Um, let's take that off. Let's put this on. Fit up's not perfect. It's not going to be. I'm sorry, y'all. Out of my sleeve. So I'll get you high, but not high up enough to see this without being in the way. Oh, sorry. So what I'll do now is I'll just uh, mark where the guard is on the wood here. I 
can't reach under there. All right, now I want to flip it around and do the same thing for the pommel. But y'all don't have to see all that. Kind of a moment of truth here. It's the first time I've ever hot peened anything. Uh, let's see how this works out. There are things about this dagger I'll never be happy about, but we're gonna finish it. Time out. Raise it back up a little. Make sure everything's good and tight. And my handle's cracked. My handle is cracked, y'all. See that? So these are two of the three. If I'm being completely honest right now, I'm just trying to get this blade done. I'm just, um, I'm over it. Um, yes, there is a lot of frustration right here. I'm not even going to try to hide that. Uh, I'm, I'm over this blade. But out of curiosity, how many of you, uh, mention it in the comments, how many of you realized I was messing up before I realized I was messing up? Um, what I should have done, and I got to clean my pommel up now. I've already gone ahead and peened it on. What I should have done was created a step here to drive the pommel into onto the tang rather than driving it onto the wood. <laughs> wood is a lot softer than steel and it's gonna, something's gonna give. And it's gonna be the wood that gives. And as you saw, it, it gave. So now I got a lot of cleanup to do uh, because of my mistakes here. And, uh, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go back to Purple Heart. Um, I'm gonna uh, get the size right. I'm gonna uh, drill the, the hole for the, for the pin and I'm gonna slab it, put, it could have put a channel in it, grind it to shape, glue it up, clean up the mess and call it done. So let's get started. So as I mentioned, I'm just gonna start with the smallest bit, work my way up to five sixteenths. Uh, that's what I need. That's three eighths there. That's a little too big. So, well, actually, not the smallest bit, but I think I'll start with eighth inch, and just very slowly step my way up. Come on, thank you. All right. So now we're just going to step it up. Well. I had camera issues uh, just seems like there are issues period but I kind of made a little milling machine with my drill press and a bit off of the Dremel and milled out the slot in both of these uh, both of the slabs so now I've got it got it fit up I've got a market where it needs to be uh, sanded down and we're gonna get on that next um, okay I don't have a sponsorship or anything so please understand that uh, I just like the paper this is the paper that I'm really fond of right now. It's uh, Indasa Rhino Wet Redline, uh, which the the 400 grit that I got there was um, gold line, I think. Um, plus line, excuse me. It's in a, a gold package. But this is the paper that I'm really enjoying these days. Uh, get better life out of it than anything else that I've used. 
Uh, so if you're looking for any good paper, um, check in Dasa out. I got mine from Pops Knife Supply. Also not being, uh, not being sponsored by them, but they're a great company. I get a lot of my supplies from them. So anyway, let's go. You get to a point, I, most knife makers hate hand sanding, and I'm right there with them. Uh, on the handles, on the blade, on whatever. Uh, but there does, for me, there comes a point where all of a sudden things pop. They just, they start looking good. And then you just, you're, you're pushing yourself forward like, oh, I want to see what it would look like if I, if I went another level. I want to see what it would look like if I went beyond this. I want to see, and it really does pay off so many times. And, uh. I was glad that I decided not to stop at 400 grit on this one. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip it to the other side. Then we'll take it to the vise and do the edges. But I'm not going to make you sit through all that. I will bring you back in for the next step. <laughs> then I couldn't get it open. The uh, purple, for those that are not familiar with Purple Heart, it will um, it'll turn more over time. If you don't treat it, it'll turn more like that color. See, the end of that, that's Purple Heart. And then that's, uh, that's the outside of it that's been oxidized for a while. So I'm hoping that by coating, with, coating it with a few coats of tongue oil, that I'm gonna avoid that. Um, I don't know that I will. I probably, I might have to put something like a, a shellac or something on the outside of it to keep that from happening I don't know but we're gonna try this way that's the first of a few coats of tongue oil we're just gonna let it si uh, sit and dry uh, next time you see it I'll be I'll be showing the blade off um, and closing this video out it's been real and it's been fun but sometimes it ain't been real fun <laughs> but yeah it's, uh, it has been fun but it's been tough too Anyway, we'll get back with you. It's done. Um, a friend of mine took some professional photographs of this. I'll try to include them here. They're also on my, uh, well, my personal Facebook page. I can't seem to get them onto my uh, my Forge page for Facebook's going through one of those changes again, and I'm waving this thing around like nobody's business. But anyway, yeah, this was uh, quite a challenge, and I'm happy that. I have finished it. I'm happy that uh, it came out. There are some, what I'm calling, I guess, Bob Ross happy accidents, such as the skeletonized fuller. You remember the last video? It ended badly, <laughs> but it came out great. Uh, it added a fantasy element to the blade that, uh, that I really like. Um, but yeah, this is it. And uh, so what's in store next? Let me see if I can put this down without damaging it or getting it dirty or anything like that um next if you want to see what i'm going to do with this big chunk of 4140 please join along this is my next major project i will tell you what i'm going to do with it it's going to be a uh, a, a warhammer not one of those big clunky fantasy things that are unusable but a, a real working functioning warhammer um so a friend of mine has uh has asked me to make one and he's been waiting quite a while for it it's time to get underway 
Um, I'm gonna have to do some tooling for it. I think around here somewhere I've got um, some drifts started, but my shop is a wreck. That's gonna be another project. I will, um, I'll be doing a series on that. You don't really have to, you don't have to watch. It'll be good if you did, but there's a lot. I'm, I'm looking at repairs and things. There's a lot of repairs to be done, a lot of rearranging to be done, a lot of stuff to be made to make the shop functional. And there's another major uh, project that could take up to a year. I'm not going to tell you about it yet. I'll be coming out with a special announcement video for it very soon. Um, but yeah, there's a lot to be done. I, I do have a, uh, a project that I'll be doing. Uh, I know there's a lot of talking, and I'm just going to cut it short here in just a second. But I've got a, a special project to do because at shows I'm going to, I'm having a lot of people ask me how to get started cheap into blacksmithing. So I'm going to be doing, I think what I'm going to call it is uh, the Dirt Forge series. How to get started cheap in blacksmithing. Um, it took me years to get everything I have. I've been at this 18 years. You don't have to buy all this to get started, and I'll show you how. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and close this out. If you found any value in this video, please uh, please like it and uh, comment. That helps me out a lot, and I'd love it if you'd share it. And if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Um, as of this morning when I checked, we're at 214 subscribers. Uh, thank you, every one of you. Um, hoping to grow and to continue to grow. Uh, we've got a show this weekend. We had a show last weekend. I've shot a little video at that one and I'm shooting some, I'll be shooting some this weekend and hopefully we will, uh, we'll have that up in the following week. So anyway, we'll catch you soon. Y'all be safe. Pattern can be a little tough to see. I need to etch it more. I wanted to jump back in very quickly just to say that um, I didn't really understand how to put them in the video, but I have some professional photographs taken by a very good friend of, of ours, um, known her and her husband for quite a number of years, and uh, but she's, she's good at what she does. I'm going to link down in the description the uh, professional photos. Please uh, go and check them out and uh, show some love for those photographs as well. Um, but yeah, it's done, and uh, since I've already shot the outro part of this, I'm going to go ahead and close this out for, for good this time and, and let you be about your day. Um, anyway, we'll see you next time.